we've got our own Rakubako here with us because when we do look at pitching, mentioned this moments ago, Heaney could be that rental moving as the Rangers are expected to be sellers. But do you still expect the Orioles to be buyers? Where are we kind of evaluating things right now? Are we still in Arlington, by the way? I, I, it's I been, think so. I think it's I'm eligible to vote days. here now. Yeah. I can literally vote I got now. a card yesterday, so I'll forward it to so you. so weird. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Orioles are looking for pitching. This is not breaking news. Starter, at least one. Reliever, at least one. You're going to any team that's been identified as a seller now, and there is some kind of a gray area who, they're going to be linked to these guys. It's just a question of, you know, is it going to be somebody under team control beyond this year? That's really appealing, but that doesn't, that's not a deal breaker. They're looking at 2024 first, which explains why Corbin Burns is here. But if you could get somebody beyond that, because we know what's going on, Burns free agent, no Bradish, no Wells, no Means, who's a free agent anyway. You also do think ahead, but you know, you, you keep hearing about, you know, Tarek Skubal, and then it's like, wait, he might not be available. There's a report there. Garrett Crochet, maybe, but you're gonna have to mortgage the farm basically for these yeah. guys. There's a Zach Eflin who wouldn't cost as much, and maybe there's a Haney, and it's kind of weird you win a World Series and now you're a seller the next year. So, you know, they're gonna be tied to all these guys. They're trying to determine who's available, who are the sellers, and these teams are trying to identify who is available from the farm system, and I still think there's that upper tier that Michael Ice will not part with. Fans all of a sudden, Jackson Holiday, he should this be on the table. This was my next question. This is perfect. Yes, Jackson Holiday should not be traded. He won't be. But yeah, go ahead and ask the question now. Who is on the Who's table? Who's off the table? That's we what I want. I, I, I want the list, <laughs> and we haven't gotten it yet. I don't think Holiday. I'd be really surprised if Kobe Mayo. And I understand there's the challenge of finding a spot for him, but I think it's sooner rather than later that he's here. And Samuel Basayo, I think you'd have to be blown away. I think there's that top tier that Elias doesn't want to touch. He hasn't had to up to this point. And that's why maybe if you do go more for somebody kind of a mid-tier rotation guy, you won't have to do that. A Kyle Gibson type, a Jack Flaherty type, Jack Flaherty 2.0, who's ready? I'm in. Let's let's bring Jack Flaherty. So it could be somebody like that, a veteran for depth. They, they could aim higher, but you're going to have to give up a lot for some of the guys that we've talked about. So those are really the two that kind of sum up that mid-tier would be a Gibson or a Flaherty. A right. Yeah, they've taken they've both taken steps forward this year from what we've seen, not regressing, which I, right. I would assume you'd stay away from. Right. And in an Eflin, you know, he doesn't walk anybody, and he's got a big salary next year, I believe, that the Rays would probably like to get rid of, maybe eat some of, and he's controllable beyond uh, the season. So it's, it's guys like that. I'm, I'm certain they're going to make a move. And I know, again, there's the, the frustration with people saying, well, why hasn't it happened yet? But I guarantee you, Michael Eyes isn't sitting back saying, ah, oh, we've got time. I'll get to it later. And says, you, you have to be able to find the right partner to do this. You have to stay steady and watch the charge. You, you have to pick your moments here. You do. Right. To go out into battle. <laughs> okay, now the other one I got to get into here because this seems to be just the hot topic of um, maybe fantasy is mm -hmm. does Mason Miller move? <laughs> You know, again, Oakland would be asking for the world, and they should because they don't have to move him. Uh, and that's somebody who would be really, really intriguing, obviously, but what you would have to give up again for a reliever and you know, how volatile relievers can be. So you would leave him in the pen because there was a rumor that they yes. might move him back to the rotation. I mean, there's talk of doing that. The guy has five pitches. You just doesn't have to throw him right now as a closer, and that is the big debate because, you know, you'd rather develop the, the starter than the reliever, even as dominant he's been in this role. And you could go ahead with that arsenal. You have to stretch him out again. But he was a starter. And, of course, there's also the concerns is you're going to blow out that arm. The guy's throwing 103. And maybe get him as a starter now and get as much out of him as you can. But, again, it would be a process to stretch him out. But is Oakland really looking before they become Sacramento and then before they become Vegas to move this guy? They're going to ask for a lot, and they should. And then you have to look at, okay, again, which top prospects did you have to give up? You would have to really hit that tier, that upper tier, to get a Mason Miller here. But... How impressive was he at the All-Star game? The strikeouts, including Otani, and he was 103. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's what makes people in orange and black dream a, a little bit about right. this one, and then others get very staunchly, we're not going to touch this kid for our life, because like right. you said, what you have to give up. Now, on the other side of things here, this current team, how often have you seen one of these Orioles teams kind of really pushing to get into the break and then coming out really looking this fresh and rejuvenated just after a couple days away. Yeah, I felt like they had more momentum going to the break last year. And, you know, the way they were struggling, the, the first explanation is clearly that they were tired, whether or not people want to hear that. And the players admit that it was a grind. Was it one off day in 31, like 43 games of 45 days? Something really stupid that never should have happened. And those happened. two off days were by coastal flights. Right. So, so they're not really off it's days. Off day. And there's been a grind. Like these games have been, you know, a lot of competitive games and they're fighting for division. 
so they, they were just gassed. They needed a break. And even the guys who were on the All-Star team, it's a fun exhibition, and they still got their rest for a couple days. And if you weren't, you got an extended break. I think they needed that reset physically and mentally. And also, as Ramona Ria said last night, it was bound to happen. Like, we were due. It was just a matter of time. This is too good a lineup to suddenly not be able to hit and score runs anymore. You said it was like a collective slump. O'Hearn, Malcastle, Westberg, Mullins. Like, there's like six cows there. There's like six guys that really their numbers were down. They were going to bust out of it. Now, is it completely cured? They were three for 13 with runners in scoring position last night. They stranded 15. They won, but you still don't want to do that. So they still have some things to work on. But 17 runs in the first two games, I don't think it's coincidence. They're that good, but also they just needed a break. Yeah, no, they absolutely did. Hopefully you're getting one coming up here soon. I finally got out of bed. I was in bed for like two days, just like, I'm staying here. Well, we're glad that you got out of bed and made it here with yeah. us today.